is when the heart is on the fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between where I used to be in this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free? There is a cross that bears the burden Where another died for me There is another in the fire Oh my death, let the death beneath the waters To my sin anymore And should I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I will bow to the things of this world And I know, and I know I will never be alone There is another in the fire Standing next to me There is another
count the joy in every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy in every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy in every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy in every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Gonna joy from every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be
Happy Sabbath. Before we begin, I just ask you to bow your head with me. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, as we talk about you, we ask for your presence to be with us and uh, for your message to be heard um, for myself and for each one listening today and um, later as well. We thank you so much for this day and uh, the opportunity to talk about you. Amen. The streets are crowded. Uh, people are bustling to and fro, some on errands, some on um, getting groceries. There's just lots going on. Um, and they're moving and bumping into each other. But they, there is one man to the side. Now, he is not moving. He is not bustling around. Instead, he is sitting along the road. And he is sitting there begging for money. This is this man's existence, sitting in the dust and calling out to those who walk by him. He is blind, and this is all that he can do in his life to survive. He must depend upon the goodness of others. Just imagine with me this picture. Every day he gets up and ambles off to a spot where he knows that people will be passing by a lot. I'm sure that uh, when he gets up in the morning, at, at some point he used to try and look presentable, um, try and wash his face and straighten his clothes, but these days of trying to look presentable are long gone. Uh, he grabs a walking stick and he slowly makes his way into the streets, through the crowd, to find a place where he can sit and beg. Now. We don't know how long this man has been doing this uh, routine, day after day after day. Um, it could be just for days, months, more probably for years. It's been a long time. All we know is that he's sitting on the roadside begging. Can you picture him? Can you see him there? I'm sure by this point he is covered in dust from his head all the way down to his toes. You see, as people are walking past the dusty roads, they kick up uh, dirt. And since he's so close to the ground, the dirt clouds are hitting him and covering him all over. Uh, just think about in the summer when you're wearing sandals or flip-flops, I am often finding the backs of my legs are, are getting really dirty from walking in sandals all the time. And so this man is getting hit by all that dust that's coming up from people's sandals. He lives in Jericho, which we know has hot temperatures. So let's also picture that he is now also covered in sweat as, as well. Can you imagine that dust and that sweat all over your body kind of combining to give you this grimy, gross, muddy feel? That's what this man has. He's blind. He's sticky. He's covered in dust. And let's be honest, he's probably smelly as well. This is where we find Bartimaeus on this particular day. But he has heard of someone named Jesus and hope is kindling in his heart. This day might be different from his other days. Let's pause for a moment and just evaluate ourselves. This morning, I wanna ask you, where are you? Now, I'm not talking about what couch you're sitting on or what bed you might be still lying in. I'm not talking about the kitchen table you may be st or sitting at. I'm talking about spiritually. Where are you? Are you covered in some dust right now? the dust of sin, the things that make you feel dirty for the, the sins that people know and the sins that they may not? Do you smell a little bit from the weak stresses that have overwhelmed you and given you so much anxiety? Are you spiritually blind? Are you spiritually blind to your need for Christ in your life? Now, just because you're going to church or watching church this morning doesn't mean that you have everything together. I want to explain a little bit. You see, I grew up in the Adventist church. I've been here all my life. And from the time I was just a little tiny girl, I was singing up front. I was doing scripture reading and offering reading and picking up offering and adventures and pathfinders. And you get the picture. <laughs> I'm still doing ministry today. But let's all be honest. Even when we have a relationship with Christ and 
if we're going to church, sometimes we don't understand the full need of Christ in our lives. We don't recognize that we need to bring him down deep into our hearts and our minds. Um, we can't just go through the routine of our spiritual lives. We have to bring him deep down. Sometimes we can be sitting in church every week or in current circumstances, watching it every week and still be spiritually blind. So, are you spiritually blind this morning? Blind Bartimaeus uh, is in, we're talking about blind Bartimaeus this morning. His story is found in Mark 10, verse 46 to 52. We need to recognize our need for Jesus, just as Bartimaeus did on that day. Let's read in verse 47. When he, Bartimaeus, heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. You see, Bartimaeus had been sitting in these crowds of people for days upon days, and he had heard stories. He couldn't help it. Surrounded by humanity every day, unable to see the, the, the scene around him, unable to people watch, as we often do, he could only people hear. He could only listen to people. And he had heard the story of them. And one of the biggest stories that had recently been on the streets of Jericho was that there was a man named Jesus who was changing the world. This man was preaching a new story of our Heavenly Father. He was preaching new truths, love yourself and love your enemies. He was reaching into the lives of people that society had looked down upon. He had touched lepers. He had hung out with prostitutes. He even had a tax collector as one of his close friends who followed him on a daily basis. These were the stories of Jesus. But what had really pricked up Bartimaeus's ears was that Jesus was known to be a healer. Despite Bartimaeus's physical blindness, he saw crystal clear his need for Jesus in his life. Carrying on in our story, we read that Jesus heard Bartimaeus' cry for help. Verse 49, Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He is calling you. Now pause here for a moment again. Isn't it interesting, Jesus' response to Bartimaeus' call for help? Bartimaeus sees his need for Jesus and is calling out for him. And still, Jesus doesn't force himself upon him or force his healing upon Bartimaeus. He doesn't go to Bartimaeus and pull him up and heal him. Jesus has done this in the past, but in this circumstance, he doesn't. No, Jesus stops and waits for Bartimaeus to come to him. Oh, I believe there's something that we can learn here. Jesus makes himself available to us but he still requires us to move towards him. Sometimes we can get so caught up in, in the need for Jesus that we continue to sit in our current situation, calling out for rescue from our heavenly father. Lord, I'm so sad today. Please help. Give me strength. Lord, I'm so sad today. Please help. Give me strength. And Jesus is listening. Our God is listening and he's more than willing to help. But sometimes we have to get up. Sometimes there's an action that we have to do. Revelation 3.20 says, I am here, Christ is here, standing at the door and knocking. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. You have to do an action sometimes so that Jesus can help you. The next thing that Bartimaeus does in our story is just amazing. Verse 50, throwing aside his cloak, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. I'm sure that Bartimaeus is not a rich man. We, we can gather that from the fact that he is sitting on the side of the road begging. And let's just imagine that most likely this cloak that he was wearing was probably his only one. And it was a great cloak. 
It, it kept him warm on the cooler days and nights. It, it was dry when it was raining and, and it helped protect his skin a little bit better. It kept the sun off from sunburning his skin. And there's also a theory that beggars in those days used to use their cloaks to collect the money. You see, Jews were not allowed to touch beggars or blind people or, or sick people. And so instead, the beggar would use their cloak to, as a kind of um, bucket so that it could catch the money. So this cloak was a good cloak. It was warm. It was safe. It was secure. It was his means of survival. <clears throat> it kept the dust off his skin so he didn't feel quite as grimy. Um, it was security. It was protection. It was comfort. Now, I don't know exactly why Barnabas throws off his cloak in our verse. Uh, we can maybe guess, was it he afraid that it was too long, that he might trip on it? Um, was it too heavy? Or did he realize that he didn't need the comfort of his cloak anymore because he was going to see Jesus? No matter the reason, when Jesus calls to him, he throws it off because he doesn't want anything to hinder him from getting to his Savior. What cloaks do you have in your lives? These things can be comforting, they can be protecting, uh, they can help you feel secure. Cloaks of relationships, cloaks of work security, whatever other cloaks you might have in your life, um, these things that we hold close to protect ourselves. Now, I don't want to say that everything that we hold close to our, our, ourselves as, as comfort or security are bad. I, there are some things that are really good and that we need in our lives. But do you have cloaks of unhealthiness in your lives? Cloaks of unhealthy relationships? Cloaks of unhealthy social media time? Cloaks of addictions? Cloaks of pride, of envy, self-reliance? I, I don't need Jesus. I can do this on my own. Or maybe cloaks of depressive thoughts that give you a safe, warm place that's familiar to you, but they weigh you down. If I start to evaluate myself, there are things that I hold close to protect myself that I don't need in a relationship with Jesus. Whatever unhealthy cloaks you are bearing on your shoulders, do as Bartimaeus did. Throw them off. Jesus is calling for you. Cheer up on your feet. He is there. Can you imagine Bartimaeus? I'm sure when he threw off that cloak of his, there was a cloud of dust that went flying into the air. Maybe even the coins that he had collected went scattering all over, but none of that mattered to him. He was on his way to Jesus, the healer and savior of his current situation. We continue reading in verse 51. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Oh, how I love Jesus. Again, he knew exactly what Bartimaeus wanted and yet he still is asking him. That's my Jesus, never forceful, but oh, so gentle. He is the all-knowing, omnipotent, powerful God, creator, and still, he asks, what do you want me to do for you? So we find ourselves at the feet of Jesus with that same question being posed to us. What do you want Jesus to do for you today? Oh, Jesus knows exactly what you need and probably even more than what you can see right now in your life. But he asks, how can I help you? How can I get you out of your situation? How can I heal you? Answer him. Answer him with the current need that you have in front of you. He is our healer, our provider, our savior, and he is more than willing to help you today. And in response, Jesus, in Bartimaeus' story, in verse 52, he says, Go, your faith has healed you. Immediately, Bartimaeus received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. When healing comes, whatever it may look like for you in your life, don't go back to that dusty sin place that you left, that dusty old cloak that you left on the side of the road. 
do as Bartimaeus did. Follow Jesus. And when you follow him, Jesus will continue to heal the parts of you that you may not even recognize you need healing in as you do the parts that you see now. So I want to leave you with this challenge. Throw aside anything that hinders you in getting to Jesus. Throw aside the cloaks that weigh you down, that make you feel like you just can't come to him. Throw aside the burdens that will block you from getting to Jesus. Throw them down. You don't need them anymore. Hebrews 12 verses 1 and 2 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the, mark, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Jesus is standing here and waiting for us. He wants to be at one mint with us. He is more than willing to give us the healing in whatever we need it in. So come to him, tell him today, and then follow him. Agenda. We just want to see you move Take away the pressure We have nothing left to prove Fresh chance to worship you
everything changed. The power of heaven come as Jesus is lifted up.